Hi guys, Rena Malik, urologist and pelvic surgeon. Today, I'm gonna to talk about a story that was in the news about a guy who got a penis on his arm. What, a penis on his arm? Yes, a penis on his arm. So the way I heard about this story was actually my administrative assistant was like, hey, did you hear about that story where a guy got a penis put on his arm and was supposed to have it put on the right place and wasn't able to because of coronavirus and now he's been living with a penis on his arm? And I said, hmm, oh yeah, that makes sense. And then later I realized how ridiculous that sounds. Like, why am I so messed up? Why, as a urologist, do I think this is like completely within the realm of normal. So I figured I should actually go into some detail, find out exactly what happened to this guy and teach you guys a little bit about it. Hope you enjoy. So the story begins with a 45 year old male in the UK named Malcolm McDonald, who describes getting an infection of the penis. And these are his exact words. It spread to my fingers and toes and turned them black. When I saw my penis go black, I was beside myself. It was like a horror film. I knew deep down it was gone and I was going to lose it. Then one day it just dropped off on the floor. That's frightening, guys. So what he's describing is gangrene and gangrene comes in two different types. It can be infectious gangrene or it can be vascular gangrene. And so what he's describing sounds more like a vascular gangrene. And what exactly that is, is when blood flow is decreased to your extremity. So it can be to your fingers, your toes, and very rarely does this happen to your perineum or your genitals or your penis. And the reason this happens is because very often these patients have a lot of vascular disease or peripheral artery disease. And when it's really uncontrolled, it can cause those arteries to those areas to lose their blood flow. So in this case, typically what you do for these patients is sometimes you can debride the areas that develop the gangrene. So in some people, they'll go to a vascular surgeon who will then amputate the ends of their fingers or toes. When it does happen to the penis, very often it's a very poor prognostic sign. It means that you're really unwell, you're really unhealthy. And so very often in these cases, doing something is not very helpful. So sometimes we will watch it and observe it. And sometimes there are some reports that have shown actually amputating the area before the black area or the devascularized tissue extends can actually prevent penile loss. So perhaps if he had gone to a doctor sooner, before it turned black or got extended, then maybe he would have been able to preserve some of his penis. The other type of gangrene is an infectious gangrene, and this is very serious and life-threatening. It can result in you being very, very ill and getting admitted to the hospital with something called sepsis, where your heart rate and your blood pressure and your organs start responding due to this systemic infection, and you can be very, very sick. This requires emergency surgery surgery to debride or remove the infected tissue to help prevent the infection from spreading and causing more damage to the body. This type of gangrene is called Fournier's gangrene. It's very common in diabetics who have poorly controlled diabetes, obese patients, and we do see this more often than we would see something that this gentleman is describing, such as dry gangrene. So I've only had one patient with dry gangrene in my entire time taking care of patients where I've had you know, a handful of patients with Fournier's gangrene green because it does happen a little bit more often. So he does describe going to the hospital and what he says is, I went to the hospital and they said the best they could do for me was to roll the remaining stump up like a little sausage roll. It was heartbreaking. So, you know, this is exactly in that circumstance what is usually done. You want to make sure that there's no progressive infection, no progressive vascular disease. You want to Make sure that you know the edges are clean and healthy so that there's no further tissue that he loses. But at that time, you wouldn't do anything right away. Then he describes what he feels afterwards and how long he waits. So he says, for two years after losing my penis, I felt a shadow of a man. My life really fell apart because I had no self-confidence. I drank too much. I didn't see my family and friends. I just didn't want to have to face up to it. So this is so, so tragic that he had to live like that for two years. He tried to self-medicate himself with alcohol to deal with the anxiety and the stress of it all. 
So I'm glad that he does go on to find help in this particular area. So let me tell you a little bit more about what goes on. He then finds a reconstructive surgeon who is willing to make him a neophallus. What that means is they're willing to essentially make an extension that can go on to the stump of his penis so that he can have a normal length penis and also he can have the ability to urinate out the tip of that penis so hopefully he can urinate standing up. So in this particular patient, he went to this reconstructive surgeon and they created a neophallus for him using his forearm. And so this is actually a very common way that neophalluses are made. So neophalluses are essentially penises that are made using your own tissues and they can be made using a variety of tissues, but the most commonly used one is the radius forearm free flap. And the reason that we use that is because the tissue in the forearm is pliable, it's flexible. You could make what's called a tube in a tube and that's exactly what you want for the penis. You wanna be able to urinate through a tube and also have kind of a rounded cylindrical shape. Um, also the sensation and the nerves that are in the forearm can be reattached to the nerves down below and allow you to have normal sensation. And so this is the preferred flap for this particular type of issue. And so that's exactly what this reconstructive surgeon did. He took the tissue on the forearm, which usually starts from the elbow and goes downwards to reconstruct a neophallus. So the way this is done is they take a skin flap from the forearm, they roll it up, and they also harvest the arteries and the vessels and the nerves from the forearm. And then they can either in one stage take that and reattach it or transplant it to the perineum, to the existing vessels and nerves that are there. Or they can do it in two stages, which is what happened to this gentleman. He got his first stage, they rolled it and left it attached to the forearm to then go on and do the second stage, which usually takes about six months or so before you go on to the next step. However, this gentleman actually lived with this for four years. So it wasn't just that he got delayed because of coronavirus, he actually got delayed because initially when he was ready to have it replaced, he was having missed appointments, some illnesses, some other things, and then yes, eventually coronavirus happened, and so he's living with this neophallus on his arm for about four years now. So I wanted to tell you a little bit more about what he said about it and how this changed his life. So he was so happy that he got this neophallus that he said, I took to it so much, I nicknamed it Jimmy. That was what me and my mates called each other growing up. And this penis was definitely my new mate. So you can imagine that he is getting a lot of confidence. He feels really great that he's soon going to have you know, mostly normal looking penis. So how is he gonna get erections? So the way, you know, the tissue of the forearm is certainly not the same as the tissue of the penis. So in order for him to get erections moving forward, he'll need to have an inflatable penile prosthesis. And what that is is a three piece device with a pump in the scrotum, two cylinders that go in through the penis, and a reservoir that holds some fluid. And the reservoir holds fluid, and when you pump up the scrotum, it actually pushes that fluid into the cylinders. I'm actually gonna show you an example right now. Okay, so here is the device itself. There are these two cylinders that go in the penis. Here is the pump that sits in the scrotum, and here is the reservoir that sits in the lower part of your abdomen. So what you do is you pump it up. From here, you press this button, and you can see that this firms up. And then when you're done, you push this small button here, and you squeeze out the fluid, and you can see it's now back to being deflated. So this is the device, this is one of the kind of devices that we have that you would put in so that he could have a sex life with this neophallus. So that's exactly how, what they kind of describe is that he would have this eventually. So after he gets it reattached, then another six months down the road, they would then implant this device. All right, so that's the whole story. So I'm excited for this guy. Hopefully he will get his um, second stage of the procedure relatively soon and go on to have a relatively normal life. All right, well, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed what you learned today. I certainly um, thought it was kind of an interesting story. I will link down all the news articles as well as some journal articles about 
radial forearm free flaps so you can read about them if you desire. There are some really interesting and good pictures of the neo phallus when it's all done. Uh, so you can take a look at those if you're interested. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what you see, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss my new videos. Thank you so much. And always remember to take care of yourself because you're worth it.